Hey, it's JC. Welcome to Urban Knife Guy, where we explore the urban lifestyle and jungle survival. Recently, I shifted homes, so I had to find a new spot in the jungle for my bushcraft camp. No, I don't stay in the jungle. I, I moved to another place and it's a, another part of the jungle. Anytime I go out field, part of my kit always includes this, the Silky Pocket Boy. It's a small folding saw. It goes into the admin pouch of my survival belt. But now that I'm building new stuff for the base camp, I need something larger. So I've got this big boy over here. No, it's literally the big boy. It's the silky big boy. This is the pocket boy. So much larger. And I'm going to share with you my experiences with it. I'll also give you a breakdown on some of the specs. Uh, so let's have a look at the saw first. Here's a closer look at the Silky Big Boy, but first, if you watch this channel regularly, but have not subscribed, please do so to help the channel out. Thanks. And there you can see on the blade itself, Silky Big Boy, this 360, this refers to the length of the blade, that's 360 millimeters long. But the overall length of this tool is more like 400 millimeters, so that's 16 inches long. And just to round up the dimensions, the widest part is about three inches wide and then it's about one inch thick or just under one inch thick. So it is a rather big boy, but it's actually very compact considering what you can saw with this. Now let's carry on over here. That 6.5 you see here represents the teeth pitch, which is 6.5 millimeters, which is the distance between two teeth. And this saw features 5.5 teeth per inch, so 5.5 TPI. Now the weight is 105 pounds or 478 grams, uh, not heavy at all for a saw of this size. Now the teeth of the blade, and I believe the blade itself, are heat treated and they're hardened to stay three times longer than the normal non-hardened teeth. There's also this black coating, and this is what makes it the Outback Edition, really made for bushcrafters, I believe. And the Outback Edition features the black blade as well as this wood and plastic composite, which is what you see here. So it's uh, very good. So it's meant uh, to really retain its grip in wet weather, especially if your hands sweat or if you're in the winter and it's icy, gets wet, uh, you get a better grip than the plastic handles. Now it's made in Japan, it is a Japanese product. Fit and finish is good. And to open it up, and I'm sure you can't see it fully over here, but you open it that way and it locks into place. This is kind of the standard uh, curved position, but you can press this and it can lock to a second position, uh, which has this angled up handle. And this is so that if you're sawing near the floor or the ground, then your fingers are raised up and you don't hit your fingers against the floor as you saw. And this, I think it really is a traditional Japanese folding knife design. And I've uh, reviewed another Japanese knife, uh, which had the similar features. Now to unlock, all you have to do is press this. You can unlock it and you can close it up. Now, if you want, you can also tighten or loosen this pivot screw over here to make it looser or tighter as you need. Now, over time, you might need to tighten it up. Now, some people do complain with silky saws in general that if you choke up too much when it's open and you saw, your thumb tends to accidentally press down on the lock, disengaging it. Personally, in the beginning, maybe that happened to me a few times, but honestly now, uh, it hardly happens to me. But just something to take note of. Now, just to give you a size comparison between this and the Pocket Boy, you can see really vast difference. Uh, this, of course, is a 170 millimeter blade, so much shorter, and uh, it's thinner as well. So it's not just the length, but the blade stock itself is thinner. You can see this is much more used, lots of my sweat inside. You'll notice I have these orange lanyards and there's a very practical reason for it. Uh, if you're sawing out in the woods, the saw is open, you tend to saw, you get tired, you set it down and you move the piece of wood, you come back and it disappears just because of the colour. So this is to help it stand out. I don't do it so much with my knives because I may resheath them immediately and I don't leave them, let's say, just lying on wood or on the ground. Uh, but I tend to do that more with the saws just due to the nature of the work. Well, final things before we go into the field, it does come with this nice canvas bag. I don't think I'll be using it because I'll be putting the saw directly in the pack, but you do have that very large billboarding over here. 
but decently made. Uh, there's a waterproof lining as well. You can zip it all around and you've got a lanyard hole over here. No belt loop or anything uh, to hang, so I guess it's, it's meant to just hold and keep the blade in place uh, or the saw in place and you can put that in your pack. All right, let's head out to the jungle. I do have a thick trunk I want to saw and I'll end my review out in the field. So I found a fallen tree. Size looks good probably about 12 to 13 inches in diameter. I'm going to take the big boy and we're going to see if I can saw off a round. And here we are so far, I've actually made a complete cut through the log. Unfortunately, because it's so long, it's now wedged together. But since I have to cut out a section anyway, so I'm going to make one more cut and I'll be able to take out that section of log. Now this legit took me about 20 minutes with bricks. Uh, this is a very thick uh, log and you need a lot of steam to power through. And I had to cut from the top. I had to go to the other side to cut and I also had to use undercuts uh, in order to really get through the entire diameter of the log. But that's a great thing about the Silky Boy or the Silky Saw in this case, the Big Boy and all the saws, really good and versatile for you to be able to maneuver around to make the cuts and that's why I think it's really a cut above the rest, pun intended. Uh, what I did find just with experience now is I find that the silky saws tend to cut better through dry wood than wet wood. Uh, let me know if you've experienced the same thing as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content in general, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.